Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Vicious RV and it fell high time we have another channel first. We crank it up with a torque. <laughs> See what I did there? That's uh, probably going to be an indicator for how this video is going to go today. A bunch of really cheesy dad jokes, but is there another kind? What are we looking at here? So on this channel, historically, you've seen a lot of what I call crossover campers, like a Grey Wolf or something like that, where it's a normal travel trailer that happens to have a ramp on the back, like a ramper camper, I've sometimes called them. That is not what this is. This is a true full blood big loaded really toy hauler travel trailer style here thing is this really requires about the same vehicle as a lot of fifth wheel toy haulers and that's the kind of safety information that i want to bring you because someone's going to see this and say whoa my half ton can tow eleven thousand pounds could i haul that and no please don't do that because on top of the driveway to this first of all it's a big 102 inch wide body it is extra tall to fit in those big side-by-sides and rangers and golf carts and whatever else but the thing is it has like over 4,000 pounds of cargo capacity not to mention there's some very good holding tank capacities on this the one that we have outfitted today decked out very nicely for getting off the grid and parking where you want and having a fun weekend a uh, fueling station generator on board all kinds of fun things on here um, not to mention this has just a massive living and loading space on here that's really where this one comes in. It has like a kitchen, sofa, super slide in a hallway, which sounds weird, but when you see it, it just works. It makes sense. There's so many fine little details that they're just crushing on here. They're, you know, like they're using Asdell. There's a lot of really good content going on. I'm really excited. I finally have a chance to get my hands on them and I would love to hear from you folks. This is my first one. Let me know, you know, where they nailed it, where they failed it, where I misstepped, where I've missed things, if there's something I've uh, screwed up or said wrong or overlooked. And let's dive into this thing because I think you're going to see more of these in the future of this channel. And, and man, these guys give us just a big wide open feel here. So the giant windows certainly help the fact that this is a full 102 wide body product, basically the widest uh, kind of RV build you can make before you have to put wide load stickers on this thing. Um, and that big vaulted ceiling also opens it up nicely over here. Now, you see that giant patio window over here? Normally there'd be a couple chairs overlooking that. I don't know why. I always like to kind of pull those out onto the ramp. It just, it just feels like more open and airy and fun to me. Um, these D-rings uh, obviously recessed in the floor, although they're pretty heavy duty. They've got some big bolts sticking up, so make sure you're wearing your flip flops in here. Uh, they are all 2,500 pound rated, by the way. And notice how, uh, where you do have slides in these, they will all be carpetless. Although, you know, the slide floor space in this floor plan is quite minimal due to the fact that you have yourself a ch just a banging kitchen going on over here which is a very high level technical classification and term, mind you. Now, what I didn't check was the cabinet style construction on these. I'm guessing it's at least pocket screwed. Yes, it is. You can see right there. This is what's called lumber core cabinetry, where the middle of the cabinet style and rail, the, the boxing of the cabinet basically that we're looking at, that is pocket screwed into wood. Now there is an MDF uh, fiberboard um, fascia on that with a sticker wrap as well. So it's not a full wood cabinet style. I don't tend to see a lot of that ever done in travel trailers though. Um, the uh, kitchen over here, uh, uh, this peninsula countertop adds some well needed uh, prep space into this one. Um, also, you notice how I mean, the, the hidden hinge cabinetry goes all the way up through this deceptively big kitchen super slide, and our pantry is actually all the way over here in the closet, or in the hallway, I'm an idiot. Um, of course, you probably knew that by now, didn't you? Anyway, what really surprised me in this one, though, was uh, this slide is all above the floor. Um, it's not like uh, hovering above the floor like some slides do. So as a result, it just had maximum storage below that oven right there. Perfect place for some, you know, bigger stuff, I think. Now, flipping around the other direction, uh, anytime a manufacturer gives me a sectionalized little kind of utensil drawer right there, I tend to be a pretty happy camper. Big farm sink on this one as well, so you can get the bigger pots and pans in there. Heck, you could bathe the baby in that baby. <laughs> Um, every little nook and cranny they could, they really utilize well. And because this is wider and because it is taller, the cabinetry doesn't feel very intrusive the way a crossover ramper camper tends to sometimes. Um, now this is like just, what would you put in here? This is just extra overflow storage space. 
I would call it pantry, but you've already got a dedicated pantry. This might be a good place for like some gloves or something like that, because you do have a little uh, coat hanger or maybe like a little leash hanger right there by the door. And I really like the little attention to detail, the way that that's all trimmed out and radiused out, so you're not like bumping into that and jabbing yourself in the leg with it or anything. Now, um, the thing with toy haulers is they're easily the most flexible classification of RV out there. Because if what you're looking for is just this big wide open living experience, you certainly have it back here. Uh, again, remember, you can move these chairs around. You can see on the left how you do have a uh, recliner function on them. They are uh, swivel rocking chairs as well. Personally, I think those kind of Euro recliners are very, very comfortable. They're something I really like, but they are certainly not, uh, you know, everyone's preference. What is your take on those? Now, being a full true toy hauler, they have room to do things uh, like instead of just the set of rollover benches down there, also the full Happy Jack power bed lift, which, you know, you could use it as sofas during the day. You could use it as a big giant queen bed at night, or you could use it like a bunkhouse. And, and this one more than most others, I think, because not only do you have like two bigger beds down here where you could have two adults below and two adults above, uh, but you've also got that privacy curtain. Now, you can obviously see through that. It's not a huge visual privacy curtain. Uh, that being said, if you are uh, trying to aggressively fold the fitted sheets, well, uh, you're probably going to be using the master bedroom for that sort of activity, uh, you know, regardless. This is going to be an awesome space for kids or guests, though, once you do get to your destination. But that is not our only guest sleeping space. Uh, they said, hey, why not? As long as we have this sofa over here, why don't we allow that to fold down as well? So, I mean, we've got all kinds of party space and sleeping space, but where are you going to feed all these people? And they thought of it in two places, because again, this thing can sit and uh, sleep a ton of people. Like I said, you gotta be able to feed everybody. That, by the way, is a smart TV up there. And I'm gonna spin you around like a record baby nice and slow so you don't have any tears for fears. Move the chairs around again, just to kind of showcase the fact that on a rainy day, you ain't gotta leave them outside. But when we get all the way back here, it includes both that little sofa dining table as well as a free floating dining table here. You could easily uh, sit three adults back there, two or three adults at the jackknife sofa that we saw earlier. So like I said, you can sit, you can sleep, you can feed everybody. Or you could just go it alone or as a couple. You don't have to have a whole mess of folks over to have a good time with this one. Now, the bathroom of this camper is one of those rooms where uh, the, the full 102 width on this one and the extra height really comes into play. Notice that's our medicine cabinet over there on the left. You can actually see the hinge, so that does open up. Now, being a full taller hauler, that means that, uh, you know, you've got insane headroom up in this thing. You are not going to be knocking your noggin. It is a radius shower, though. So when you are uh, soaping your hair up, basically, um, you, you kind of have to turn your body so that either your belly or your butt is facing the, uh, the entry so that, you know, you have the elbow room you need. That's really the key with those radius showers. If you try to stand the other way, sometimes you bang your elbows a lot. You ain't gonna be banging elbows on that toilet, though, unless you brought your buddy in here with you, which, um, <laughs> weird, gross, I don't know, uh, not, not my thing. <laughs> Great linen space, uh, you know, room for all your, I, and, and can we give them, like, how many times have you heard me say, I'm getting, uh, I don't like manufacturers who are leaving this open shelf style storage in their bathrooms. Obviously, you're seeing that it is, uh, <laughs> you know, fully enclosed, fully encapsulated. So stuff is not going to be falling on the floor when you're in transit. That is my personal nerd preferred way of doing things. Now, isn't this just the most flattering angle of my double chins? By the way, that's mostly why I wear the beard. Without it, uh, I look like I've got a baby face and I got myself a three chin. Anyway, now in this bathroom, you see up here how we do have basically just the little four inch fart fan. It's going to be enough for this room right here. What is actually kind of nice about these though, is the fact that you have another one of those up here in just the bedroom. So they're small fans, but they're taking care of smaller rooms and since you know, the wiring is already there. It's very easy to upgrade those into something more substantial. The one that I, and I'm not, I, I'm not sponsored by this company. I just mention them all the time because I like their product. I believe in their product are the Hangs Vortex fans, H-E-N-G-S fans. You can find them all over the place. You can search it on the internet. Uh, they make, you know, 
uh, just high speed exhaust, they make multi speed exhaust, and they are so much less expensive to install versus like a full true traditional max air variety because you're not removing the full ceiling housing. So if you want the big vent fans, you can get those done. I'm shooting from the hip, maybe a buck 25, well, $125, buck 25, sorry. He isn't slang, I don't want someone saying, well, Josh said it was less than $2. Because if I do that, somebody will. Now you see that little switch in the upper right? That is for the little LED accent light over the bed. I love that it ain't Jedi neon blue. Um, you've got a, a switch for our main ceiling cabin lights because they are up so high. Oh, by the way, the bathroom ceiling vent fan that we saw, that does have a wall control switch, so you don't have to try to poke at it with a broomstick. The bedroom one does not, so you might have to kind of stand on the bed to uh, you know, get, get to that thing. Oh, by the way, down here, we have ourselves a 70 by 80 king bed. With this being a full 102 inch wide body, that means that they had room for the big bed and still maintaining, I think, some very decent walk around space. Now, you may notice, though, there's a big box right there, kind of acting like a little bit of a side stand. Uh, that is there due to the fact that you've got the uh, the generator enclosure under it. And on the other side, you've got yourself your, your pass through compartment. And anytime, I, I love it when manufacturers do that. Give us that little drawer below the hanging closet. Now, I don't think that shelf below the generator switch is going to be a head knocker because this is so tall, but let's find out. So there's the shelf in question, and there's the dirt, 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 dirt. I was gonna say dork of the hour, nerd. So what came out was dirt. Anyway, let's see if I burp my head on this thing. One, two, three, go. Yeah, engage the core muscles. Not even close, even wearing a hat. This is nice. And as promised, a little look at the storage over here under the bed. Nice little chunk of space. Um, you might notice, though, it does not have those nice little easy gas strut uh, things for lifting the bed. Thankfully, it's such a short platform. The platform itself can hold the bed up in the air pretty easily, but you do have to lift the bed manually to first do that. Um, and if you bump it, you always kind of run the risk of it dropping on your head. Not my favorite thing. Now, I also went ahead and closed the slide up to show you in road mode. And you see right here that our, what I would call our primary bedroom door, no longer kind of cuts the mustard. Instead, we're going to actually slip through here through the bathroom. But what really shocked me on this, despite the size of it and everything, it has surprisingly good pass-through uh, accessibility right here. Um, now, I mean, you know, when you have everything loaded in the back, you might not be able to really use that rear entry door. And in case somebody has a question, because, you know, if you bring the chairs with you, where you store the chairs when that slide is closed, how much width do I have? How much height do I have? There's like a million, zillion, billion different measurements available on these. There's just no way I can predict everything. Um, so if you want to know if your specific thing fits, please, the best thing for you to do is contact uh, a member of our team at one of our stores that actually has one of these in stock and on hand and say, okay, I've got a, I'm gonna say like a Razor or a Ranger or something like that. And here's its measurements. Um, do I have enough length, width, height, whatever to fit that thing in? Whoa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, for <laughs> I forgot I had a dovetail. <laughs> I. I'm walking backwards, I'm walking blind, and I step back there and I just about went backside over to tea kettle. Thank God I had the ramp door up. <laughs> <coughs> Live from New York, it's Saturday night. Anyway, you get the idea. There's, you know, I can't predict everyone's toys. I can't predict every measurement every person's going to need. So if you need to know that stuff, just call our team and we can hand verify. Now, uh, one of the things that I like is they did not put the refrigerator in the slide so that it is, uh, you know, always going to be travel accessible right there, which I think was a really good decision. And once again, uh, they, uh, the full 102 inch wide body really kind of minimizes the loss of space that you have from that slide. So this being a 102 wide body with that being a very shallow slide, not a deep one at all. Uh, I'm going to guess that you have I'm shooting from the hip, about seven foot eight of width from that countertop to the sidewall. Now, obviously, when you have the chairs strapped down, you have a little bit less space right there. So keep that in mind. Something else I also like to do is I like to show you the latch system uh, that exists on toy haulers. That is not personally my favorite one. I prefer a positive cam lock type style. Although that being said, 
Um, I mean, obviously you can easily padlock that. So it's not like there's a big loss of security. That's just, I don't know. It's just a personal preference. Although, you know, even big giant horse trailers get by with those old traditional uh, swing latches just fine. Now, pardon the good morning sunshine glare that we have coming in our eyes right there. We'll get out of that way in just a moment. Um, up top here, I want to focus on not just the, the backup camera prep, which just about every RV has anymore, but the fact that you've got the double flood load lighting. Uh, you know, nice symmetrical look on the back side of this thing up there. Really gives you awesome light and visibility of your patio in the evening. Now, I think someone's probably going to ask, um, does it have an option for that, like, you know, three seasons kind of door wall combination like i think some momentums have that in their travel trailers and to my knowledge no these don't they only have what you see here although what we are directly looking at that ramp patio that is actually an optional piece of equipment on these um if you are out west where you're desert camping this might not be a whole lot of use to you in terms of using it as a patio if you're over here in the midwest it might be extremely nice but one thing i noticed you see how the rear uh gate is all one piece now, I don't use toy haulers a lot, so I'm asking you folks, is that a good idea? Is that a dumb idea? Does it not matter? I don't know. I'm kind of curious, so I'm asking you guys. Um, over here, uh, we've got our power corner jacks, and this RV right here has a really good example of something. People ask all the time um, about insulation packages and whatnot, and you need to understand that when you have a fueling station... <clears throat> in the underbelly you cannot fully enclose everything because of that big metal box right there that is like our fuel cell effectively and uh you might notice how the living area has a nice enclosed belly but you cannot fully enclose that because it could build up uh like vapors basically and um you know create a bomb in your belly which uh sounds like what what happens after you eat too much taco bell <laughs> <laughs> now it's kind of funny because when you look at this that patio awning you're like oh dude they really chintzed out on that awning it's not small it's a big sized rig and actually it's a good sized awning but it almost feels like you wish they extended it past that window that would probably require some specialized hardware though now the one thing i want to tell you here is uh this does not have the miss piggy anti-slam karate chop doors uh, if you try to just karate chop that and fling it shut, here's what's going to happen. Chick slam! Barely. Why do I have chicken arms? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, flying past here. I, I say this all the time. I'm just going to gloss past it. I don't like speakers up high. I, I would prefer them to be down lower somewhere. Although, I understand why they're not down here in the wall. Because there's no cabinetry. There's nowhere to store it. There's nowhere to hide it. Uh, whereas up top there, that's where some cabinets are. That being said, personally, I just, I wouldn't even worry about them. I wouldn't use them. I'd just bring my own portable Bluetooth speaker. Now, one thing I want to mention here is not just the TV hookups. There's a, uh, a black tank flush. It's over here on the door side of the RV. I fully understand that's not the ideal place for it. But on a floor plan like this, uh, there's, you know, that, that, the bathroom is on the door side of the RV. That means that your, uh, your tank flusher is giving its most direct route to the tanks over here on the door side of the RV. Ooh, and boy, howdy, with that sunshine coming out, that does have a dynamite look to it, doesn't it? Now, something else I want to talk about here is Asdell. There are not a lot of big travel trailer toy haulers like this using Asdell. Now, someone's probably going to say, well, wait a minute, doesn't Stryker do that? And yeah, they do, because Torque and Stryker are pretty much the same thing. They're uh, governed and managed by a lot of the same people, so they share a ton of DNA as a result. For those who weren't aware, um, in the same way that like Dutchman and Crossroads are subsidiaries of Keystone, uh, Cruiser, who makes Stryker, is a subsidiary of Heartland. So as a result, uh, they, you know, they tend to share notes, for lack of a better explanation, quite a bit. Now, um, we kind of talked briefly inside about 30 amp versus 50 amp and one air versus two air. Uh, this is the reason that uh, sometimes you can't get a second air conditioner on this RV. If you option the uh, onboard generator like we're looking at right here, then it loses the ability to become a second air conditioner camper. I'm suspecting because the logic is with a 4000 generator, you can only run one air conditioner. So we're going to prevent you from accidentally overloading stuff. 
That's my guess. Is that, does that make sense? Is that, you know, is that dumb? You guys tell me. Now, simple little side mount solar prep plug, but what do they have upstairs? Short answer is I don't know. I ain't been up there yet, but we're gonna go find out together. On the way through though, over here on the face of the slide, you see there's a little high pressure, uh, like, you know, garden hose, sprayer hose, coily hose kind of thing, whatever you wanna call it. Um, that is cold water only, but like if you've been out mudding, you can rinse your stuff off before you, you know, you haul it into your beautiful uh, toy hauler interior over here. Um, and I don't know if you caught it earlier over here next to the ladder, there is the onboard fueling station. I personally prefer it over on this side of the RV. Um, in my experience, most vehicles tend to have the, uh, you know, the vehicle fuels uh, inlet on this side of the RV. So this makes the most sense to me, but I do suppose that might vary a little bit depending on which kind of vehicle you have. Has that been your experience or am I totally bass backwards here? <laughs> Technical term. <sighs> 250 pound rated ladder. I guess I should have skipped breakfast. <laughs> anyway, up top here, there's a couple things I like and there's something that really shocks me. Um, the, the execution, like one of the things that I look for in RVs is I, I like, you see me in my videos all the time. I get up here on the roof of these things and there's a lot of brands that I don't think they, they expect you to ever get up on the roof before you buy it. They don't think you're going to look at the roof of the RV when you're buying it. And the attention to detail up there is not always fantastic. This looks really good. Like the sealants are really clean. The, the workmanship is really clean. When they are using the little goop wand to put all the sealant around all the fixtures, first of all, they're using plenty of it. It reminds me of like what Rockwood does with just tons of sealant up here. Uh, secondly, um, there are, uh, there's not like a lot of little dribble lines where the guy was moving too fast or, or lady, I suppose. But, and, and I like that. It's a nice crown roof. It feels very solid underfoot, but there is something up here or a lack of something that just absolutely shocks me. And that is a complete lack of any factory like solar prep or solar options or anything like that. Now they have the little portable side prep plug that we saw just below the generator hookup. And considering again that this does not have a 12 volt fridge option, because I think the expectation is again, if you're gonna be off grid, you're gonna want that two way fridge. Like the logic here makes sense for this type of RV, I get that. But at the same time, it does still feel like something up here wouldn't hurt at all. Even if it was just one of those little Cherokee size 50 watt like solar battery maintainer packages, that just, it feels like a little bit of a miss to me. Res respectfully speaking, that's my two cents. That's how I see it. I'm not going to sit here and claim to be an authority and say, oh, you know, I'm my way or the highway on that. I don't, I don't feel that whatsoever. I would like to hear from you guys though. Like these are extremely popular. So obviously this isn't hurting them whatsoever. Is it just because I'm this Midwestern park camping silly boy who doesn't go off-grid toy hauler camping a lot. Is that skewing my perception? Is this perfectly fine? Or do I have a point here? Baja Blast, Baja Blast! That's what that color is called. It's the Baja Blast Edition Torque Series. Anyway, a couple other, <laughs> sorry, I <laughs> squirrel. A uh, couple other quick little, uh, I think important details before we wrap things up here. Uh, in my haste, I might've skipped over a couple, I think important features, like the fact the underbelly in the living cabin area is not just enclosed, it is also forced air heated down there. Um, additionally, this is an Asdell using product. I didn't explain that too awful much. On the Torque series, I believe they're Asdell just under the fiberglass skin. When you get into the Big Brother Cyclone fifth wheel toy haulers, you're actually double Asdell. But what that's doing is it does keep the weight in check a little bit, although obviously this is a heavy built, heavy duty sucker with some serious cargo capacity to go with it. But it's also noise reducing. It's also, it helps block more heat from the sun, which in conjunction with the white uh, roof skin and the, uh, the the generally, you know, polar white exterior on this is going to work very effectively. The AC shroud is black. It does look cool. It might operate a little bit less efficiently as a result. I've yet to have somebody say the black AC shroud was the reason I couldn't keep my camper cool though. But if you are that person, chime in the comment section, or if you have a camper with black AC shrouds and it keeps up just fine in the Texas heat, let us know that too. Maybe I'm making a big deal over nothing. And, and you know, one other thing I kind of noticed on these, it's like every RV anymore. It's like it's white, black, silver. And admittedly, this isn't too far off of that. But what do you think of that little, I don't know, is that is that cerulean accent? Like, 
I'm a guy, so in my head only exists the basic eight box of crayons. Like I don't, I don't have the 72 count box of crayons in my head. So somebody tell me what color that accent is in there. Whatever it is, I like it. I think it looks really good together. It's light, it's bright, it's fun, it's energetic. And this thing, man, that is more than just like a casual weekend out camping. That is a rip roaring good time. I am so, I am pumped. I cannot wait to see like the cyclones and the different things that uh, I can get my hands on now. I am loving my job. I am loving all these new first time things that we're bringing here. And if you like seeing all the different first time things, let me know. Also, I only have so much that I can record and pump out in this channel. There's just only so many hours in the day. So you folks at home, you are guiding me. Tell me what you wanna see more of and I will do my best to always focus in on it where I can while sprinkling in a nice little mix of everything for everybody. I don't want my channel to just be only the fancy laminated stuff, which this happens to be. I want to have a little bit of everything for everyone because everybody goes camping. Camping, you know so when you're ready we're ready at Bish's RV I'll leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability until next time guys thank you for hanging out with me I had so much fun today I hope you did if not tell me what I can do to make your viewing experience better like maybe turning down the hear me when I start rambling for too long anyway take care stay safe have fun best wishes from Bish's everyone this is awesome